I'm Susan McGinnis in the Energy News Center. We're talking about the Gulf oil spill and just how much damage could be caused over just how long a period of time. And we're talking with Dr. Edward Overton. He is Professor Emeritus for Environmental Studies at the School of the Coast and Environment at Louisiana State University. Professor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now we're hearing a lot about damage from Louisiana to Florida coastlines up the East Coast, also out to Cuba and elsewhere. Uh, first, geographically, just how far could this oil reach? Well, the oil could reach over a very, very significant uh, stretch of, of, uh, of Earth, particularly if it does get into the loop currents. I, I think that the key issue here is that oil, when it goes in the environment, changes from fairly dangerous to almost benign forms. And so even though the oil can spread over a very large area geographically, uh, the dangerous forms will probably not spread over. So as oil is in the environment, it weathers, it changes composition, and ultimately comes fairly benign tar balls. I'm, I'm certain that tar balls could get through the, uh, the Gulf Straits, the Florida Straits, and, and maybe even up the eastern coast and, and further. But it would be in the form of tar balls, and tar balls are basically a nuisance and not a real ecological problem. Okay, so not, not too dangerous. But Louisiana wildlife officials say they have found tar balls at the south pass of the Mississippi River. And this is a big channel that runs through Louisiana's salt marshes and is a breeding ground for crab and shrimp and oysters and, and other seafood. I mean, what happens to life in, in those areas and the life, um, you know, the food cycle, the things that those animals feed on? Right. Now, now they've, they've found more than tar balls. The tar balls are, are little globs of oil that, that have a, much like a jelly bean, and they've got a, a hard outside surface and a liquid inside. What we're seeing coming t on the South Pass now in the coastal marshes is pretty thick oil. So finally, the thick oil is starting to reach the coastline. It's just now starting. It started maybe two or three days ago. Uh, so it's, it's way beyond tar balls. Tar balls are pretty benign. Mm -hmm. uh, thick oil is certainly a long way from benign. It coats the grasses and it may contain some of the toxic uh, chemicals that are, that are in oil. And, and so not only do you get a coating effect, but you have a toxic effect on the little critters, the, the juvenile and larval species that live down in the roots of the marsh grass. So big impact on coastal marshes, big so, impact. So how much damage overall do you see happening? I mean, I guess a lot has to do with, with exactly how much oil yet to be pinned down, like it you know, is there. Um, there appears to be a lot more unknowns than there are knowns. Well, absolutely, there are a lot more unknowns. A lot of the damage is, is, is not what you're going to see. I mean, you, we never see these critters that are at the base of the food chain. What we know is that they have a habitat and they live in the marshy grassland. So these are not animals that we see, but if you damage their habitats, then of course that's the foundation of the entire food chain. I've heard numbers like 90% of the, of the marine harvest in the northern Gulf of Mexico uh, started out somewhere in the uh, in the coastal marshes of Louisiana. So you're you're potentially impacting a very very large segment of the marine population down at the base where everything starts at, at the at the at the lowest level in the uh, ecological chain. Okay, give us your perspective now on on the effects of the oil entering this uh, th this loop current. I I'd like you to compare this to another accident, maybe the only other uh, really similar accident, I guess, mm -hmm. which which is the Campeche Bay in 1979. That was somewhat deep water, though not, a, not as deep as this, uh, three and a half million barrels. Um, how did those coastlines recover? Well, the good news about the Iktok, uh, well, it was a, a long-term spill, nine, nine or ten months, uh, and it, it got into a current that's in the western Gulf of Mexico that took it 500 miles north up to the uh, South Padre Island, the uh, southern Texas coastline. So by the time the oil got up to Texas, it had basically formed these tar balls and tar mats, and, and both of those are, are the more benign uh, types of oil that are in the environment. So the impacts from the, from the Iktok 1 spill were, were relatively minimal along the coast. It was pretty messy, and there were lots of tar balls. Tar balls can be picked up fairly easily with a, with a shovel. You just go along the beach. You have to clean them up. Mm -hmm. They keep coming in with the tide. You have to clean them up. But they're not causing the damage like we could see caused with the liquid oil that's coming onto the much more fragile Louisiana marshy grasslands. That's where the big problem is. And that's the problem. Now, that's the bigger problem short term. I mean, what about what about longer right. longer term? You know, and talk talk about the the ability of the earth to to heal itself. Well, uh, oil that goes in the environment undergoes these weathering processes, mostly microbial degradation, and so eventually the bacteria will convert the oil back to carbon dioxide. So uh, it takes a long time, but, but that certainly will happen. 
uh, particularly when oil gets in the loop current and it's dispersed. Concentrated oil in the environment causes lots of problems. Oil that is diluted, that's spread out by the, by the currents, causes a lot less problems because it quickly gets into this benign form. Sheens, sheens weather away and you're left with these little tar balls which are, are, are more of a nuisance than they are an ecological problem. Unfortunately, the oil well is very close to the Louisiana's coastlands, mm -hmm. so some of the oil, before it gets weathered and changed to this benign form, is impacting the coastal areas along the northern Gulf, not only in Louisiana, but of course Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and uh, I guess there is a possibility that some of it could get into the western currents and, and, and some of the tar balls could end up along the west, the Texas coastline also. What about the toll on the Gulf of Mexico as a whole with, with more and more drilling? We, do, do we tend to focus on the damage from, from single uh, rig or, or tanker disasters? Um, you know, shallower reserves in the Gulf have been depleted. Now the companies are going into deeper water. How much can the Gulf take a, as an ecosystem? Well, we're getting ready to find out. I mean, this is a, a long-term spill over over months rather than a single short accident. So uh, again, we don't know exactly how devastating this is. It's significantly different from the Iktok one in that it's much closer to the coastal wetlands. So uh, the impacts along, again, down in the base of the, the ecological chain uh, could be very significant. We really don't know and won't know for several years out. It'll take a couple of three annual cycles to totally evaluate just how much damage is being done both to the uh, geology of the coast. You know, the, when I say geology, the coastland, the coast in Louisiana is made up of basically marsh grass, and when that is killed, the coast erodes back. So you have coastal erosion, land loss, as well as habitat loss. So all of these things are possible. Uh, right now, we don't know the extent. Uh, the extent certainly is not good, but just how bad it is, we won't know for a couple of years. So for you, this disaster is a huge uh, learning experience. It, it's for, for all people that are interested in, in ecological uh, uh, environments, it's a, it's a learning experience. We've got oil being released in the deep ocean. We don't know how much of that is actually coming to the surface. Some of it undoubtedly is still trapped down in, in the deep oceans where it can cause oxygen depletion, formation of dead zones. So there's, there's a whole bunch of of issues associated with the impacts and this is an unprecedented spill and we sure hope they get that well capped soon we we don't this is not the kind of learning experience we want absolutely all right dr overton from louisiana state university thank you so much for your insight thank you and i'm susan mcginnis with clean skies news